we are checking out one of the coolest ham radio events that I've ever been to in this video, and that is Hams in the Park. It occurs on the second Saturday of every month here in the Twin Cities, in the warmer months at least, and uh, it really is like POTA, like Field Day, but really not like either of them. Uh, it's not a contest, it's bring whatever interests you, VHF, UHF, HF, satellite stuff, um, and just bring your latest cool project. Uh, come to the park, get on the air portable, hang out, and uh, get to meet some fellow hams. It's such a fun event, and I want to share it with all of you. So let's take a walk around, uh, talk to some folks, and see what we got. How are things going over here? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Walking around, checking everyone's stuff out today, of course. My name's Matt. Matt? Yep. I'm Pete. Nice. KZ0SQJ. Nice to meet you. How are the band conditions today? Pretty good. Uh, Tony was uh, doing pretty good. Uh, now I'm on 40. Um, What's the noise floor out like here for you? Not bad. I was concerned since we're kind of down in a hole with the bluffs that we wouldn't get out, but it's it's managing okay. So, I mean, do you come to the Hams in the Park quite often? Uh, when I can, yeah. yeah. To uh, quote a Dollyism that I've uh, quoted already today, I'm kind of busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest <laughs> lately, so I don't have a whole lot of, quote, spare time. Sure. But try to make the best of it when I do. So. What do you like about coming out to them? I've been kind of asking people that question today. Like, what's your favorite part? Getting to see some of the other gear that other people are using and what they're using for antennas and, and radios and, and, you know, portable operations. I mean, my... Uh and that really is one of the coolest things about this event. People bring out some of the really neat projects they've been working on that they're passionate about and they're excited to share with other hams in and around the community. Um, I mean, just really interesting stuff that you otherwise wouldn't see, uh, you know, if you're going to any other kind of ham event. Um, take a look at this next guy. He's got something called the Micro Shack, which is really, really super cool um, if you're into public service type of communications. And I get to hang out with people and meet new people, and it's it's fun, you know. Put down. And then just set it on top. Oh, there you go. In the tool case. This way? Yep. Or on top, top. What you just did there, yep. Right here, huh? Hypothetically, if you had an extension cord. Look at that. Dual band, USB, five, 25 watts, cigarette lighter plug. 25? Yep. Nice. I call it the micro shack. Yeah. That'll work. And the idea of my, I'm trying to cling this phrase to every ham. It's designed to talk to local communication. And what do you that, use for an antenna? I can use uh, anything from a piece of wire on the 90 degree end of it. I can use a uh, mag mount. I can use whatever, the PL259 or any extension. So I could use it on a 100 foot tower. Connected to that. <laughs> sure. But, so I have a little whip that sometimes fits in here that's not quite tuned. But anything you can do, as long as you got even a rubber duct that can handle 25 watts, you got your micro shack. Nice POTA set up there. And the idea is this, is if this was, let's say, a primary of the fourth or whatever parade, if something fails, this is the secondary communication at a fixed location. So if you're like on one side of Ember Grove Heights, this would go to the other side or Richfield in my case, as a given like you work with Mac and Don's or you work with a church or a school, they have this stored and ready to go, and they work with one or two hams, and they wait for instructions after the event of whatever it may be. And that you're not taking any more than a coffee uh, table or a TV tray. Okay. To do everything you need to do. Bug out. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So 25 watts. Radio is 109. Chargers or cigarette thing was about 10 to 12 bucks. Power supply is 12. Well, nine bucks for the case. Economical. That's, that's a great little project. That's, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I said it has to be you. something to go out for a distance, but if you have the right antenna, 25 watts will get you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. Yep, because they got Anderson power plugs. Okay. 
so that is early 90s now this is chris kf0 bjt he came up to me because uh, he's a subscriber and a follower of mine here on youtube and across social media uh, so he wanted to chat and uh, i took a moment to ask him a few questions and just understand you know what got him into ham radio he's a relatively recent ham and more importantly what got him interested in the hobby well, again, uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, background in IT, um, I got my tech license in August of last year, so 2020. Um, I passed my general in February of 2021, uh, but probably the most interesting stuff now are uh, the digital modes, uh, including uh, Yesu, System Fusion, WireZX. Now, these antenna trailers are super unique and really cool. I want one in the worst way. Trailer in his. So we've got 15 of these little tower trailers. We've been buying them at, at equipment auctions. And they usually have a six kilowatt generator and a 30 foot steel tower. So we own 15. Yeah, I've seen these at the, uh, the other get ups up north. These are cool. So we've got quite a few. And then we were um, doing HF today and we're playing around with our mesh antennas at the top and our mesh cameras and stuff. So these guys buy surplus trailers um, from an auction and then use them for portable operations. And they put mesh networking gear on it. You can hook up an HF wire to it. You tow it behind your car uh, and you can get on the air quickly with a 30-foot mast. And you can put you know, some kind of power source in it. It's really, really neat. Electric radio, actually. Oh. Um, it's got um, a Motorola micro. Now this is W9IGX showing me one of his, I said, old radios here. He's kind of operating as a uh, welcoming party here at the end to the park. It's a General Electric Delta S. Um, I had my bag over it because the sun was getting it uh, like really, really hot. Sure. But um, it's, um, it's a good old radio from the good old days. Um, I had to reprogram the memory chip and I had to re-tune uh, these helical resonators and the phase lock loop synthesizers stuff here I had to do. But, um, yeah, I've got eight um, simplex channels programmed into it, and uh, it's really pretty nice. So as you can see, this is just a phenomenal event. Um, this event can draw anywhere from uh, 20 to 30 people, upwards of 60 or 70 people um, can show up on a good Saturday afternoon. It's just a great way to meet hams here in the Twin Cities. And honestly, we wish more people would do this so we could make contact on HF with other parks around the U.S. I mean, this is like POTA before POTA was cool and the, the trendy thing to do, like so many people are talking about today. Um, and again, I love coming to these things. I come to them as much as I possibly can. Um, and again, if you're in the Twin Cities area, if you're in western Wisconsin, I highly recommend you come check this out. Um, such a great event. Um, everyone is super welcoming, um, very nice. And it's just a great way to meet hams in the area and see some really, really cool stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll catch you again next time.